So, as the first race of the 2022 season draws closer, the teams are trying every trick possible to extract the last bit of performance from their new cars. Now, considering the wide variety of changes that the teams have had to work around, fans can expect to see some unique looking designs in each car's bodywork. And while we've already seen some interesting choices, such as McLaren's pull rod suspension and Williams' side pod with the hole, there are still plenty of elements that teams have kept under wraps, only to bring them out during testing. The latest of these, include the radically changed Mercedes W13, equipped with little to no side pods that's caused quite an uproar in the paddock. So, without wasting any more of your time, let's see what Christian Horner had to say about Mercedes' supposedly illegal car. Now, back in February, both Mercedes and Red Bull showcased a first look of their car for the general audience. While Mercedes decided to lay out the real deal, Red Bull chose to show a sample car, much like the one shown at Silverstone last year, emblazoned with the newly updated Oracle Red Bull Racing livery. The actual RB18 was said to be under development at the time, and would finally be unveiled at the first pre-season shakedown at Barcelona. Arriving in Spain, Red Bull would at last show off their latest creation with an eye-catching sideboard design that featured an undercut. At the end of the three days, Red Bull completed 358 laps, whereas Mercedes managed 393 laps with Lewis Hamilton going fastest. Despite the strong numbers from Mercedes, Red Bull didn't seem particularly worried about it, given the experimental nature of the cars during testing. Coming to Bahrain, however, Mercedes brought along a few nifty upgrades of their own for the official pre-season test, surprising the likes of Ferrari and Red Bull. The most innovative among these being the Psi Zero side pods, or Zero pods as seen on the W13 on day one of testing in Bahrain. The bizarre design, while being a clever choice from Mercedes, did raise a few questions over the legality of having a barely discernible side pod. The W13 also featured wing-shaped mirror mounts, which didn't sit well with Red Bull. Commenting on Mercedes' interpretation of the regulations, Red Bull chief Christian Horner stated, from our point of view, Mercedes has gone a step too far. That doesn't correspond to the spirit of the regulations. For us, these wings are illegal. Those are not mirror mounts, but two wings. In addition, they built vertical baffles on top. They have nothing to do with the mirror mount. Later in the day, though, Warner redacted his initial statements about the Mercedes car, having been a bit too quick to criticize his rivals. Maintaining his stance on the matter, Horner said, Comments have been quoted that certainly weren't made. The car is innovative and it's an interesting solution. The Mercedes car looks like it complies with the regulations. It's just a different interpretation, a different solution. I think it's interesting. It's very innovative what Mercedes have come up with. It's quite a different concept to what we've pursued and certainly some of the others have. Whether it's the right route, time will tell. What we see in Formula 1 is there tends to be convergence over a period of time of design philosophies. Despite the initial outrage from him, Horner didn't have any substantial backing for his claims, which became clear in the team's denial of Horner's initial comment. Seeing an opportunity to take a dig at Red Bull, Mercedes team principal Toto Wolff shot back at Horner, commenting, How does he know, half an hour after he saw the car for the first time, that our car is supposed to be illegal? In the meanwhile, some of the drivers as well took notice of the ultra-slim looking Mercedes W13. Current champion Max Verstappen was not really taken aback by what Mercedes had in store, having beaten the team last season in an equally matched car. Ugly, isn't it? It's a different way of working with the car. No, I'm not concerned. We can only focus on ourselves. I said this so many times last year, and we have to do it again this year, even if the car looks a bit different. There are so many unknown things, what we need to learn about, so I'm not worried at all, declared Verstappen as he set the fastest lap time overall in the final day at Bahrain. Ferrari Charles Leclerc too had a few thoughts of his own about the other cars, mentioning, I'm sure that Mercedes and Red Bull have so much more to come and are just hiding their game a lot for now. So it doesn't mean much, the timing page, but on the other hand we're focusing on ourselves and for now it's a good test, we haven't had any particular issues. As the new Mercedes car became the talk of the town on day one, Toto Wolff looked quite pleased by the response it garnered from the rest of the paddock as well as from the fans and media. Talking about the efforts that went into the new redesign, Wolff revealed, I think we're really proud of what we achieved in terms of concept, but now we need to make it go fast. I think it's a development direction that we like, and it's about tuning the car, and so we're experimenting a lot, as we've done during the day, and approaching it with curiosity. Wolf also disclosed some of the legal aspects behind the car, stating, the process is very clear. When you go in a specific development direction that you deem as having the FIA a part of scrutinizing it, you're exchanging CAD data. You're making them part of the process. 
Wolf's counterpart, Christian Horner, however, is still on the lookout for any other surprises from Mercedes or from either of the remaining teams. The rate of development will be fast and intense, and I expect that to change. Mercedes will be a huge factor in this championship, I have no doubt. But for me, the car that looks most settled on the circuit is the Ferrari. They've had a very strong testing period so far in Barcelona and in Bahrain, so I'd say they look extremely competitive out of everyone on track. Now, while Mercedes and Red Bull still have a few issues to figure out, it's been smooth sailing for Ferrari, who put in some strong performances during both tests, having received significantly more testing time in the wind tunnel by virtue of their sixth place finish in 2020. Former world champion Lewis Hamilton, when asked about who would win the race had it been held during the testing weekend, replied, I think Ferrari, for what I can see. Today, Ferrari would probably be getting a 1-2. Hamilton's new teammate George Russell too felt the same about Ferrari's performance, expressing, Some teams are looking very fast, a red team and an orange team in particular. They seem to have things well under control and they're on top of everything and they look very strong, low fuel, high fuel and with the tyre management. The two Mercedes drivers don't seem particularly happy either and aren't really confident about their setup despite the new upgrades. Hamilton had a few complaints about the car, saying, the car definitely is different to last week, but I think it's more so the tyres working with these temperatures are different here. We definitely have things that we're trying to get through. I think others are struggling less, but maybe when we get to next week, we'll have a bit of an understanding. But it's difficult out there, it's bumpy, it's slippery, there's sand. In the morning it was way too hot, and in the afternoon it's just gusty. Hamilton's woes would continue as the Mercedes W13 still happened to struggle with issues such as heavy porpoising that plagued the car. This meant that Mercedes were also off pace compared to their main rivals. Team boss Toto Wolff addressed these concerns proclaiming, I think there are still issues that are Bahrain specific. It's very hot, you see a lot of cars still bouncing, some on the straights, others through the corners, so it's a tuning question and we haven't really looked at performance data yet. Now, the rest of the teams on the other hand are wary of Mercedes claims about their ongoing difficulties. Carlos Sainz accused the team of sandbagging saying, I think it's typical Mercedes, just hype up the others and then come to the first race and blow the competition away, which is typical. If it had been the first year they've done it, then I would maybe believe them, but they've done it for 5-6 years now and they keep performing in the first race. Hamilton, however, denied any such misgivings. We'll be really, really, really good if we're having all these oversteer moments and having us tacky driving just to hide our cars, said Hamilton in response to Sainz's comment. Even with Hamilton's assurances, it's safe to assume that Mercedes could very well have a trick up their sleeve just in time for the Bahrain Grand Prix. So, what do you think about Mercedes' drastic zero-pod design? Could it be just what Mercedes needs this season, or will the FIA ban such a design given the backlash from Christian Horner? Let us know what you have to say in the comments below, and if you like this video, then go ahead and hit the like button. Stay tuned for more F1 content at Pitstop.